over the weekend was January 6th, uh, and the anniversary of January 6th. And it has gotten more attention, I feel like, this go-round than in the past couple of years, uh, specifically the anniversary, in part because uh, the Republican Party and um, people who are supportive of the Republican Party need to revise the interpretation of January 6th, both so that it is less of a liability in the coming election, and I would suggest so that it is a... Um, they have access to the same type of uh, tools in the event that they lose the uh, the election at the end of this year. Yeah, you might need to actually steal one again. And uh, Republican polling, I think we said this the other day, shows that Republicans have softened on uh, uh, their perspective of what happened on January 6th. Now, all you need to do is go back to January 6th and January 7th of 2021 and read what Republican lawmakers were saying at the time. Mitch McConnell was uh, practically calling for some type of like a treason trial of Donald Trump. You had many Republican Congress people who had um, who were terrified. And I, I don't know that I blame them. Uh, certainly Democratic. Uh, I mean, all the politicians I would have been. Yeah, I blame uh, them for what they did afterwards. <laughs> but they were articulating that they were terrified in those days or two. And then they realized, like, oh, wait a second. Our voters are lunatics and they had no problem with this. There is a uh, new footage still coming out from that day. I think in part maybe because uh, some documentary filmmakers, maybe some of the actual rioters themselves um, you know, have waited to release this footage. Maybe they've monetized. I don't know. But uh, this is a footage of um, a, a Troy Nels. He is a um, he is a, a, a capital rioter. Uh, rioter. Rioter. Yeah. Is that who it is? Who is this guy? This so, sorry, uh, the Capitol rioter is the first. Or is a uh, Damon Beckley. Uh, Nels is uh, twenty Texas twenty second congressional district representative. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So Nels is a uh, representative. You will see him through the glass, right? This is that shot through the glass that has been broken into the doors of the uh, congressional floor, essentially the, fo the, the, the House floor. And you will see the Republican congressman. You can tell it's him because even though he's masking, it is a mask of the Texas flag. Yes. And you can hear the range of, uh, of rioters who range from completely deranged um, to like, hey, you know, we're just doing this. And, uh, you know, why are you being so difficult? And then you can also hear like the intentions they have. In the meantime, you're also going to be see Capitol security guards with their guns drawn, um, basically, you know, uh, making sure that they don't see a gun peep throw through this glass door. It's pretty uh, intense footage. In hindsight, it's incredible that more people were not killed it by Capitol shocking. Police. It is shocking. We're sick of this. And we're making it knowing that we're sick of it. Okay? Would you? Huh? And I've never had people like this. Say again. I've been in the last place in Texas for 30 years. Talk a little louder. That's because you've never seen corruption like we have seen this last month. I'm ashamed. And I'm ashamed of my Congress people. They don't even stand up for it. They're giving away my grandchildren. They're giving away my grandchildren. Freedom. What? You need to pack up. Freedom is at hand. Go find another door, everybody. Do you understand we're fighting for you? I ought to put the guns down. That, you're we're not going to do anything. You know? That's dumb. Hey you guys, you gotta breathe. Oh, put you the guys gun away. can get the same listen, paycheck when listen. the government gets replaced with real governors. Yeah. With a good real 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 I mean, it goes on. There's more. Do we have the longer version? Even like, what's because uh, what I find really fascinating about this is um, you hear like these different things. You should put the guns down. We're not going to do anything except for get rid of you socialist pigs. Yeah. There's also other. There's clips. a wide range of people. Yeah. Here. Oh, this yeah, is please. the other yeah, one. Here we go. You can hear them and some of the conspiracy theories you might have become familiar with. 
um, that the right espouses and these kinds of folks were. And, and ostensibly they're doing this because of the corruption that has taken place <laughs> over the prior month. Now, look, I mean, listen, uh, I accept the possibility that a lot of these people are simply deranged. And uh, there's a whole class of them. But what, what is quite evident is that um, these people were uh, manipulated on some level to do this as part of a much bigger scheme. We know, and I don't know why we didn't hear more about it, frankly. I mean, it was reported, but you don't hear much about it. When the application was put in for the rally, that Donald Trump uh, spoke at, they were explicit about not having plans to march on the Capitol. Multiple times they were asked by the um, Parks uh, Service, uh, uh, people who are taking the application, multiple times they were asked. And now it was revealed through, uh, I think it was a, an investigation by the Parks Department with access to private texts that those people applying for the application, A, not only were knowingly, explicitly lying, they were also, they knew that the president was going to call for an, uh, an assault on the Capitol, a march on the Capitol, whatever you want to call it, and they knew that he needed plausible deniability. I mean, they articulated as much in these things. And so there was clearly a plan to use these people and why, you know, like, why would they be lying about it? Why would this group that is applying for the application have advanced knowledge of it if there wasn't a plan? Now, people can go on and on about like, well, Donald Trump's an idiot and these people are idiots and these other people are idiots and that's in their plan He's didn't incapable work. incapable of intentionality. Yeah, yeah. but the, the idea that they didn't and they weren't successful. And again, let's remember. They were a Mike Pence away from being successful. And Mike Pence was still taking meetings that entire week. He was begging Dan Quell, give me a reason to do this. He desperately wanted to do it. I mean, this was Proud Boys stand back and stand by. Donald Trump essentially knows how to, uh, and I think he gets off on it, the idea of like having power over these supporters who are fanatical towards him and we know that like there was coordination at least in part with kind of the foot soldiers the roger stone types and people within the administration and who do you think that those like uh dirty scoundrels like stone are communicating with the 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 base of the party the crazies who were organizing this it seems quite clear i can't play this i mean because you can hear the uh, the range of sort of like uh, uh of of ideas as to what they're doing there Language warning on this one, too. You guys are not going to lose a paycheck if we come in the building, man. And nobody's you guys are not going to lose a paycheck if we come in the building, man. And nobody's going to get hurt. I just want to say, like, the, the within, like, 20 seconds, like, we're not going to hurt you. And then you hear someone screaming, you effing pedophiles. And they like, say, you can only kill so many of us, which kind of flies in the face of the narrative that trickled out from some Republicans, like, a month later, that this was just a tour of the Capitol. Uh, you know what's also interesting about the tour? They seem to have broken the glass into the... No, let's keep playing it. They seem to have broken the glass into... <laughs> In the, well, that's one of the features of the tour. If this was not an insurrection attempt and they were just going to die there because they were dying to see the Capitol Rotunda, I mean, give me a break. Come on, man. Listen, these are good people. Look, brother, they're trying to do their job. No, I don't, I don't want to get shot, we man, really. Is please. We want to do our job. We, we want... What are you doing? Hey, what's your we, name? We just want our grievances redressed like the Constitution says. That's all. That's all. And we know we'll have no homes to go home to. Look, man, this government's cost my family 400 grand, dude. I'm in the poorhouse over this stuff. Dude, you know what it's like to just about be on the fucking street, man? It sucks. It sucks a lot, man. I'm in the house. We just want to check some shit out. We are in the house. Not the 
There's a lot of things that, uh, you know, uh, people could suggest that they voted for their representative to do. And, um, it, you know, crashing through uh, Congress and uh, basically sitting there threatening the uh, Congress people in such a way that people have to draw their guns to protect it is is pretty um, stunning. And you should be home with your nine month old kid, I would also say. Oh, nine year old. Nine year old. Nine year old. Oh, OK. Well, no. probably home with him, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is it is fascinating to see that the the images of this and also the real genuine attempts to pretend that this was somehow part of the constitutional order. And, uh, you know, I've heard uh, people try and say this is the equivalent of, uh, of Black Lives Matter protests. Black Lives Matter protest um, did not attempt to usurp the Constitution of the United States, which is exactly what was going on there. The practice of the Constitution of the United States. Now, I'm not, you know, like, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not a West Wing watcher. But the fact of the matter is, is that it is the idea of a peaceful transition to power is pretty important. Yeah. And I have no problem with all of the... Um, the court cases that the Bush uh, administ the, uh, the Trump administration. administration attempt to file certain instances, it was obviously uh, stuff that was uh, slanderous that uh, guys like Rudy Giuliani did. But you can you can tie it up in the courts. But this is extra judicial. There's just no two ways around it. This isn't even this isn't protest. Yeah. This is literally part of a plan to change the operations that were going on inside that uh, that that um, inside the House and inside the Senate chambers. That's what the idea was. This is what that is just one facet of the plan. That was just sort of like the hammer while, you know, Ron Johnson was trying to corral fake electors. And here is a representative Elise Stefanik. She is a member of the Republican leadership. Listen to how now she's talking about this. Being the weaponization of the federal government. Do you back to this key question? Do you still think it was a tragic day? Do you think that the people who stormed the Capitol should be held responsible to the full extent of the I law. have concerns about the treatment of January 6 hostages. Uh, I have concerns. Huh. We have a role in Congress of oversight over our treatments of prisoners. Uh, and I believe that we're seeing the weaponization of the federal government against not just President Trump, but we're seeing it against conservatives. We're seeing it against Catholics. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so proud to serve on the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Government, because the American people want answers they want transparency and they understand that as you look across this country there seems to be two sets of rules if your last name is Clinton or it's Biden you get to live by a different set of rules than if you're an everyday patriotic American I've been clear Kristen if you go back and play the full speech I gave on the House floor I condemn the violence just like I condemn the violence of the BLM riots but I also importantly stood for election integrity and security of our elections which if we don't have that we do not have a democracy so the real threat to our democracy is these oh, Jesus, will you interrupt her for God's sake? She called them Trump, hostages. Whether it's James or whether now, it's you can, I mean, if, if, if at least Stefanik was a huge carceral reform advocate, I can understand that maybe she would be using hyperbole, but she doesn't give a crap about uh, uh, carceral reform. The idea that these people are hostages is nuts. And the idea that Meet the Press allowed that to just go by without having to explain, what do you mean hostages? 
No, she's just deploying the usage of like the the same tactic she was using to smear those college presidents um, with like her accusations about uh, sh- she's trying to invoke I don't know some sort of like Israel parallel. I'm not exactly sure. Well, well that's sure. true she, from a messaging standpoint. But there are other, there's another part of the message, which is these people have not even been convicted in courts of law. They have just been taken. Exactly. Hostage. And and Welker does not follow up with that. Not at all. It's no, unbelievable. No. Her, her follow yeah. up is you really think Biden gets a free pass when his son's been indicted. It's unbelievable. I mean, interrupt her for God's sakes. As somebody who was weaponizing the government to, for instance, like uh, <laughs> the demagogue college presidents, yep. like she's actively doing that. And you says, well, we can't have that happen. I mean, yeah. If only uh, uh, NBC had access to, you know, like uh, an interviewer who would ask uh, like uh, maybe a follow up question that was relevant. Oh, oh whoops. Incidentally, uh, Maddie Hassan left uh, MSNBC. Got fired. Uh, mm. Yes. 